Hello, what's up, what's up guys? Welcome back to Zodiac Trader. So today we're going to uh, talk about uh, the latest Fed speech that the, Mr. Powell, Jeremy Powell said that there will be a postpone in the timing of cuts that uh, we're not going to see a an interest rate cut in March. So, um, for that matter, that actually vindicate and what I was saying months ago, that I was saying the Federal Reserve is not likely to have another rate cut by March. So that was what I was saying, and partly because that I think based on a couple of reasons, first of all, uh, the economy is you know, solid and you're seeing these uh, employment and job data market quite strong and if you kind of having this rate card too aggressively it would just refuel the asset bubble and probably gonna see the, the market further overheats and that is going to be a over an over leveraging kind of scenario that would probably be bad for the economy and the second thing would be because of the uh, right now, the inflation is going back down, but uh, the inflation is still quite resilient and still kind of have a distance away from that 2%. So if Fed kind of aggressively kind of pushed to this rate hike, we're likely to see that inflation going back up and jeopardizing the entire, um, you know, like the entire tapering process. The last reason why I think uh, the Federal Reserve is not likely to have another rate cut by March. Is that uh, they, these central bankers, they know that right now you have great inflation, reflation, so called, in the economy system. As we can see from the recent, in, like, uh, internet giant companies, their revenue and profits are just shrinking. And we, I, I could see there. Uh, advertising revenue and you know their um, gaming revenue and they've been having these layoff because of the high interest rate environment so in a sense uh, the job market isn't doing quite well and the opposite we're seeing uh, the low paying jobs the number of the low paying jobs are actually increasing so a lot of people uh, who work in uh, restaurants who work in the uh, service industry uh, these people tend to have a lot of more than, you know, uh, you know, it's easy to find jobs like that, you know, with, with jobs with no future. But if you're talking about high paying job, you're going to talk about a job that's solid enough to, for you to raise a family, then, you know, typical uh, middle class kind of job from, from that matter, the size of the job market, that kind of job market is actually shrinking. So this is what politicians and economists people have been saying, try to cover these politicians up by saying, hey, we have a uh, expanding job market, but in the same time, we have more less paying jobs and we have fewer, uh, we have a lot more uh, low paying job while we, in the same time we have uh, less kind of, uh, you know, high paying job. So we're actually seeing the structure of the job market changed dramatically. And because people right now struggling, finding good paying jobs and high, you know, we're talking about in finance industry and also te uh, technology industry, these industries are cutting off their bonuses, right? So if you actually check the 2023 year end bonus, you're not likely to see that kind of bonus is keeping up to what happened in 2020. So unfortunately, so um, for for that, for the free reasons of birth, that that's a basically the reason why I think there will not be another rate cut in March. And for now, let's talk about a little bit of my thought to the recent market and also the macro, a little bit of macro analysis to look at. So first of all, if we look at right now, um, I think if we if you look at what happened in the euro economy, 
you see a familiar pattern because right now the euro economy is actually stepping into a recession, which is a technical recession. It's kind of a bad thing. Uh, what we're seeing is um, the euro area is having less inflation. We are seeing the euro area inflation is going back down uh, quite sharply. But in the same time, we didn't see the GDP growth keeping up. So that would be the case for euro. You are going to see more disinflation. You're going to see this inflation going back down. But at the same time, you're going to see stagnate uh, economic growth. You're not going to see as much of as much of, of this uh, economic growth as you know people have expected. So that actually is a stagflation scenario. That actually means when you know the, the economy stop growing, but at the same time, you have low inflation in in the economy system. And that actually, uh, that would be a, a, a quite a bad thing for a euro economy because that actually means you will have less jobs, you will have more uh, unemployment rates, and then you will have, um, you know, probably you have less, uh, you know, uh, CPI, but in the same time, the corporate profit will actually shrink accordingly because you have less demand of the, the euro economy. So. I've been saying the euro fragility for years, you know, ever, ever since the Brexit occurred and taking place. Um, people are thinking that your know, euro is going, going to have a, a great day without, you know, Britain or, or maybe the British people are thinking uh, they're going to have, you know, extremely good time when they're out of euro. And that's not the case. And right now we're seeing the aftermath of that. Uh, that, of that stupid Brexit, you know, because we're seeing Euro as a economy system is pretty fragile. Uh, and right now we're seeing, uh, you know, the, you know, we're seeing, if you look at the UK inflation, if you see the UK asset price, you actually see that, you know, uh, people are actually paying more uh, for uh, daily goods because of your, you, you need a lot of, uh, goods shipping from Euro, and you need to pay for the tax. You need to pay for a lot of expense, and on top of that, that's why people are actually paying a lot more. And actually, if you compare the UK inflation versus the EU, EU inflation, you actually see the you know UK inflation just skyrocketed. So we are actually going to see the entire Euro and. UK is going to perform much worse. And the second thing is, uh, based on the first point, what we have observed from the euro economy pattern, uh, a lot of economists may argue that it's precisely because of the EU economy system has postponed of the rate cuts. And that's why EU is having a recession. And right now, a lot of people are the case would be a lot of economists may say may argue that but i suppose uh i i would i would argue differently because uh right now a lot of economists and hedge fund managers you know pushing the federal reserve trying to have the fed to have you know the rate cut faster than it should be but the problem would be uh, a lot dramatic if you pushing that economy and having these rate cut uh, a lot than it should be, and it w it will kind of fuel the asset price back up, and then uh, because you having this very easy financial uh, environment, uh, what the 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 only difference between the QE and the status quo is that you're uh, in the QE era we were having zero percent of interest rate that actually means we actually pay zero uh, we, we when we are borrowing money so actually that would be a terrific that would be a huge advantage for financial institutions um, and for now um, we have an easy uh, financial 
environment, that means you have very more than enough liquidity in the system. But in the same time, you're bearing the high interest rate cost that you're going to pay a lot more money to borrow money. And you're actually having uh, less money to be borrowed. And that will be the case. So if you look at the asset price, you look at the liquidity, this is the, an easy financial environment. But if you look at um, if you look at the interest rate, if you look at the structure of of the the, the, the financial market, you actually realize it's actually pretty hard for the financial institutions. So right now, that's why I'm saying if you have a rate cut in this kind of economic system, you will kind of encourage the you know institutions for taking more risk and taking more and more and excessive risk. And that's going to fuel the asset price. And at the same time, the risk crisis and et cetera, will probably push the commodity price and the manufacturer costs higher and jeopardizing the entire private situation, the, 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 the private action, the entire Fed tapering maneuver. So I think, I'm afraid that would be the case. Okay, and third, which is the last thing I would argue, is that um, right now we are seeing uh, a lot of in companies having less profit. That's because not because we have um, uh, like we're the reason why we're seeing a, you know the shrinking copper profits because the demand is actually going lower. This is what typically happen in the high interest rate environment, you have less economic demand. So that would just bring up an uh, entire paradox to the economists because what the Federal Reserve try to do is they'll try to uh, shrink the Federal Reserve balance sheet. And at the same time, they want to keep the economic demand solid. All right, so that's very contradict to, to each other. So if you are you if you're raising rate, okay, you try to cut down his balance sheet, and then you're going to have less economic demand. You're going to because you are having less economic demand, you're going to have less jobs available, right? You're going to have the environment. You 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 need to let the bad companies step out of business. And you need to let the strong and resilient business to stay, right? It's how the nature works. The strong get to survive, the weak uh, get to, you know, or, or, or the, the fake business get to, you know, eliminate it. But the problem is the, the crazy 2008 uh, kind, of, uh, kind of scenario creates an artificial monetary environment for bad business and high value, excessive valued business to survive. And right now, the Federal Reserve are trying to maintain that situation. And I saw that, that I think it, it's impossible to, for Fed to achieve both goal by reducing back the inflation rate back to 2% and in the same time uh, limit the asset prices from having an overaging, over leveraging scenario, but in the same time controlling, expanding the economic demand in or in the same time. It's just very difficult. So even like right now, even the Fed of officials are thinking about uh, having to avoid the hard landing. I mean, that would just uh, if if Fed actually pulled that off, that would be I would say that's one of the damn miracle, right? Uh, of the monetary universe, like how do you pull that off, right? So based on all of it, that I think we're not likely to see another uh, rate cut, probably not for not even for May. So we're going to see Federal Reserve kind of postpone the rate cut, and they are going to. They are, they are going to allow the asset price, the S&P going historically high, but they are, they are going to, uh, every time when they, when they postpone the rate cut, 
there will be another corrections of the, the, the stock market. Again, the stock market right now, for, 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 for all the matters, I think it's a bubble. But it didn't match of the company's revenue. And there is a, a high probability that a, a, collection, a correction is going to happen by the end of this year. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, I will see you in the next episode. If you like the content, please share and subscribe. And please leave your message. If you like to communicate, you put anything down in the comment section. So I will see you next time. Goodbye.